Yeah, it's a tough question. We don't know is the right answer. <laughs> We're trying to trying to figure out, um, but it turns out that every time you try to put your finger on it, that's the spot, that's the activity pattern, that's part of me. Then you realize, well, it's kind of uh, it's gone. It's not there. So it, it turns out that um, our brain is simply vastly more complex than we thought, and um, there's not a clear division of labor that this part is uh, responsible for my thoughts and for, for me feeling me, and this part is more the unconscious part. No, it's, it's always a dance, different parts, different uh, activity patterns can be part of the me or I feeling. And um, I think it will take still a long time before we get a good answer, a clear answer to this question, to this very simple question. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it is in science. When I think about this question, then I, I like to think about the car. So. We all, or people, everybody knows how a car basically works. So you know, oh, you have to steer the wheel, there's gasoline, which is used to make the engine work, right? You can also describe a car in the level of particles, right? Physical particles. But if you want to repair a car, then neither of these levels is useful. You cannot you make use of this. For, for, for repairing a car or for upgrading or pimping your car, um, you need to know the mechanisms, how the engine works, how the things work. And that, for me, is uh, when we come back to the brain, is the ne uh, neuroscientific or ne neuronal level, uh, where we have these mechanisms and uh, only by knowing these mechanisms, for example, we can consider um, um, repairing the brain, for example, when there is some kind of uh, mental disease. We cannot do it on the psychological level, or it is not very useful to work there on the level of particles. You have to be working on the level of mechanisms, on the level of neuronal circuits. And would the driver then be the, the eye? The driver. Yeah, that's where the where the analogy kind of breaks down because in the brain, where where's this eye or or who's driving it? Why do I have this feeling that I'm kind of driving it, right? So <laughs> there's the analogy with the car breaks down. I don't want to sound arrogant. But I think that neuroscience has redefined this question because philosophers have, of course, for a long time tried to figure out this thing about free will and me choosing something. And over the last uh, three, four decades, neuroscience has basically ruled out some of these explanations. For example, from the point of neuroscience, any idea that uh, incorporates this notion of a soul or a something, some entity that is separate from the body and from the brain, that kind of controls the body and the brain, these kinds of explanations are gone. They, they don't work. They, they, we know that they are not correct. Everything that we do, that we think, that we feel is here in the brain. And I think this is a, this this notion is kind of uh, it's a bit frightening because well, am I only my brain? But it is also for me. It, this is super cool because this means that well somehow this little machine here creates everything. My mental world, my feeling of agency, everything. That's it, and that's why I am studying this. And that's why I think that neuroscience has redefined uh, what the what the question about free will is about. Okay, because it's 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 not about figuring out whether there is some soul or something that uh, kind of controls it. Now we ask different questions, like hmm, in the brain. So where is this I? What does it mean? 
to have the feeling of having a free will. We try to understand, okay, so there is, um, there is, uh, there are unconscious processes that kind of contribute to our choices. There are conscious processes that contribute to our choices. Are they really different? Do they contribute differently? Can it be that these conscious processes have some power? Or what does it even mean within a system that is purely physical and biological, where there is no separate thing, no separate soul? So, so for me, this is like um, neuroscience has kind of changed the question. But in some sense, I feel that neuroscience, of course, it still cannot solve all these issues. Yes, um, it's a very important question and it's uh, um, in the US, for example, it is already debated quite a lot because there are many neuroscientists exactly saying that, well, we have to kind of also redefine these terms and uh, look at, our, at the le legal system of uh, what is really written there, that it may kind of make sense with what we know about how these things uh, work. Um, um, but uh, I think so far there has has not been a real like a breakthrough or nobody has rewritten the laws based on neuroscience uh, yet. But this will eventually, I mean, it, everything takes time and this, this, this will happen. Yes, yeah, so when a person has a mental disorder, then everything he or she does comes from the brain. If you or me, who probably does not have a mental disorder yet, yeah. uh, everything we do and decide also comes from the brain. So the, now the question is, so in, the, in this level, there's nothing different. There's nothing different. And in both cases, both in the, in the case of a person with, uh, with a mental problem and in our case, much of what we decide is kind of decided uh, kind of unconsciously. Consciousness plays no or, or a very little role. If, yeah. um, so, so in this sense, um, I kind of feel um, that, that this, is, this relates to the, to the previous question also, that we kind of see that this, these notions of, of responsibility and free choice, uh, they, they don't make sense so much anymore. And uh, one way to, to deal with it is to say that, look, um, okay, you are your brain and uh, uh, something brought you to this point that you are, for example, uh, facing uh, some penalty, right? And um, we are not trying to figure out whether your free will, your will, your, your mental agency played any role in this. But we're simply saying, you did it. This is your brain did it. Okay, this is this is you. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. That there's, I, th I think um, we will see that as, as soon as we will get into this issue of whether you really wanted to do it, whether it was whether you were thinking about it, um, whether it was your choice or you were kind of uh, blinded by the affect, it gets it gets very complicated. And if you are clever, then you can get away with uh, murder, basically, by knowing a lot of mm -hmm. about neuroscience. So, so because you can say that, look, it's, it's not me, it's not, it's, it, it's this past history, these are my unconscious processing, this is not me. So, or at least you would get a, 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 a less severe uh, penalty, right? Mm -hmm. um, but let's see, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy issue. Right? This is how our society works, that in the end we try to think about different issues. Everybody has their own ideas and we kind of uh, try to uh, come to the, uh, ask the same question from different perspectives. And of course, sometimes in the end, some people uh, notice that 
the questions they are asking or the perspective they're asking from has been wrong. I mean, I, I studied psychology, but I very quickly understood that I cannot really understand uh, how people work or how, why people do the things they do when I simply stick with psychology. Then I, I made the change. I, I switched to neuroscience because I feel that this is the level of explanation uh, I want for uh, answering the questions that interest me. But of course, for any, anyone else, this is a different topic. But the point is that if you feel that kind of your field might be stupid, consider changing. <laughs> but if you feel that it's, it still makes sense, then go on. <laughs> I think that, that, that's kind of the point that I was making also that neuroscience changes the question or redefines kind of the, the issue because it's, I think, I think the problem is that we kind of think that uh, this unconscious processing is, is kind of dumb and automatic and, 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 and not part of me, but hey, this unconscious processing happening in my brain is me. Um, and uh, this unconscious processing is, is, is uh, the key for being me. So, for example, the things I say now are clearly kind of my thoughts, right? But it's not that during this conversation here, I make them up in my conscious mind. No, my unconscious part, parts, they kind of offer me these, uh, these ideas, these points that I try to make. And um, maybe later I can think, oh, I, I could have said something like uh, better or slightly worse. But in, in, in general, the unconscious uh, part first does a pretty good job. And second, it's what defines me because what, what the things that I say, the things that I write, the, say, the things that I do, this is me, right? And if they are driven largely by unconscious processing, then this, this unconscious processing is me. This is an important part of me. Yeah, yes, and, and this, is, this is kind of the point that I'm trying to convey, that this traditional thinking should be abandoned. It, does, it doesn't make sense in the light of what we know from the brain. It, it, it simply, it's, it's not useful. It's, it's, it only gets to you to these kinds of silly questions that really um, you can drink, you, you can uh, discuss when you have uh, drunk uh, uh, wine, right? But, but, but uh, if you want to get on with this uh, problem, if you want to understand what does it mean for someone to choose something and how do we have to change the legal system, then one should abandon these old notions and, and, and try to figure out how, how things are. In a sense, I'm, I'm saying that, and neuroscience is saying that this conscious part, this part that kind of does the conscious thinking is really only a tiny part of me and it might be the dumber part okay it's not the king it's not the best part it's not the most important part it sometimes is the stupid part mm -hmm. and it's it's a tiny part so this unconscious processing that is based on what I have learned what I have done this is the part that I should also very much care about. And um, our legal system and our notions of free will should also take that into account. I, 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 would, I, would, I would agree with that after, after having studied these questions for, for more than a decade, that consciousness is not, it's not so interesting. It's not the king, it's not the main thing. It's in some sense maybe only a very boring thing. Yeah. So so we th we should kind of be kind of uh, um, happy about our unconscious processing that can happen and and kind of can do these wonders. For example, this thing that we can um, be in a smart conversation. No machine in the world can can still do it, but humans we can do it. 
because because of of this unconscious processing that uh, is happening in our brains and um, that's why neuroscience also largely isn't trying to figure out uh, what this con- what consciousness is but rather is trying to figure out how this m- many different unconscious processes uh, work because that's the key for understanding uh, intelligence reasoning that's the key for understanding who we humans are and uh, why we do the things we are, we do <laughs>